I'm Matt Willis, Public Health Officer from Marin County, and it's July 29th, 2022. Yesterday, San Francisco declared the ongoing monkeypox outbreak a public health emergency. In Marin, we reported our third confirmed case. Over the past two and a half years, we focused on COVID-19 pandemic response in our communications. But as we draw attention to the emerging crisis of monkeypox, it's important to clarify differences between these two threats and point to similarities that allow us to apply the lessons we've learned. If monkeypox isn't being called a pandemic, it's a semantic nuance that many don't agree with, including me. In the past two months, nearly 20,000 cases of monkeypox have been reported across the globe in 71 countries that didn't have monkeypox cases in the past. And cases now are present in almost all states in the US. This is a rapidly evolving situation and can be called a public health crisis. So what does that mean for us in Marin? Stepping back, when we hear about an emerging infectious disease, we generally want to know two things right off the bat. First is how is it transmitted? And second, how sick does it make people? Mode of transmission and virulence are critical predictors of our experience as a community with any infectious disease. And there are important differences between monkeypox and COVID-19 in the mode of transmission and virulence or severity. A virus that spreads to the air, like COVID-19, means everyone is at risk for infection. By contrast, monkeypox is primarily spread through close skin-to-skin -skin contact, which means it moves through specific social networks which we can describe. So with monkeypox, not everyone is at risk for infection, for now. According to the World Health Organization, 98% of cases currently across the globe are among men who have sex with men, and sexual contact is the main mode of transmission. So some people are at much higher risk for infection than others. So we're hearing two things that might seem contradictory. One is that monkeypox is a public health emergency. And also that according to the CDC and World Health Organization, the general public is at low risk. But both of these are in fact true because the emergency status supports the swift action needed to protect those at known risk now and to jump on this opportunity to prevent the virus from becoming more widespread across the community and globe. It's worth noting that with infectious diseases, the mode of transmission often stimulates the most divisive or politicized elements of our response. For example, because COVID-19 is transmitted through the air in public, masks, which filter the air we breathe, are an obvious tool in the right settings. But this has also been one of the sources of greatest conflict and political gain that has distracted us from the primary goal of pandemic control throughout the past two years. Similarly, viruses that are transmitted through direct contact, especially sexual contact, can lead to blame and stigma of those who are most impacted, which also slows our response and leads to preventable suffering. We saw this with HIV and can't afford to say, make the same mistake of marginalizing anyone at risk. Another important difference between COVID and monkeypox is the severity of illness. Of the almost 20,000 cases so far globally, there have been five deaths reported, which signifies a mortality rate far below COVID-19. So we're not talking about a disease that threatens our healthcare system or society at large in the same way. Monkeypox does, however, cause lesions, the pox themselves, which can leave scars, and these can be extremely painful. And for children and pregnant women and others who are immunocompromised, there can be more serious medical complications. A key similarity between monkeypox and COVID is that our most important tool is vaccine because it equips us with immunity. Ramping up monkeypox vaccine manufacturing and distribution is the single most important priority in this response. In Marin, our team has requested 1,000 doses from the state, and we received 200 so far. Saturday, August 6th, we're joining with the SPAR Center to administer vaccines by invitation alongside our usual COVID-19 vaccine clinic to those who are at highest risk. It's not a lot, but it's all we have to work with for now. 
As more monkeypox resources and vaccine becomes available, we're ready to ride on the rails of our strong COVID vaccine distribution system to get monkeypox vaccines to those who need it most. Communicable diseases always reveal cracks in our social support systems and reveal biases, and monkeypox is no exception. But we've learned through COVID and HIV and virtually every other communicable disease that when we neglect any community, we all suffer. Monkeypox is another opportunity for us to prove that when we have the resources, like enough vaccines, we can blend compassion, science, and strong operations to protect everyone in our community. Thank you for doing your part.